Saving for down. Saving for down payment. So, buyer consultation or on a phone call with a buyer and they're like, yeah, I'm still saving for a down payment. Where do you think that comes from? Ignorance. Okay. I couldn't agree with that more. So what do you mean by ignorance? In my opinion, in an appreciating market, let's say you have a $500,000 price point, and let's say even the market's only appreciating at 3%, that's $15,000 per year. And a lot of buyers aren't going to save $15,000 in a year. And so it, a lot of times it just kind of winds down to ignorance. Um, um, and another aspect of that, in my opinion, is a lot of people still think yeah, you have to have 20% down. So, um, so, and there's also a lot of people don't understand there's, there's first time home buyer programs. Now they aren't always the best as far as monthly payment. Um, but, uh, you know, you're getting your foot in the door and you're locking yourself into a fixed uh, overhead when it comes to your household. Unlike rent that's going up on average, what in San Diego, 2.4, 3, 3 point something percent. So agents, let me, let me ask you guys this. Are you hearing more pushback about, I want to save more money for my down payment to bring my payment down? Or I don't have enough money to make a down payment, period. Yeah. The second one more. The second, the second one? Okay, so there's a misconception or a general thought process from the buyer standpoint that they just need more money for a down payment. Yeah. Is, is, it comes from two places too. Like pass the mic. Okay. This is gonna be valuable information right now. So it comes from two places. Uh, the first place is them um, knowing that there's gonna be some cost to buy, right? So aside from down payment, closing costs, move in stuff, things like that. Um, and then the other side is not knowing exactly like what the down payment structures and things like that are. But I find that a lot of people, when they think of just the overall price point of a home being this like half million dollar or, you know, quarter million dollar, you know, venture, they don't feel good coming in with empty pockets because there's no insurance for them in case, you know, something happens. Right. So. I think you bring up a good point in regards to what is the amount of money somebody's going to need when they purchase a home. Because I know personally, I've, I've talked to buyers and they think the down payment is everything. So when I say, okay, well, how much are we going to use for the earnest money? They're like, okay, well, we'll use, you know, 5,000 or 2,000. To them, it's like, okay, well, that's part of my down payment, which it is. But then it's like, okay, well, now we have closing costs. And they're like, well, no, I've had the down payment for that. So I, I think this kind of also goes back to that original conversation of setting proper expectations and educating that buyer on, okay, look, you're the buyer. These are the things you're responsible for. <laughs> when we do submit an offer, we're going to have to tell the seller, this is how much we're offering initially to show you we're a real human being, that we're going to put some skin in the game to buy the house. That's called an earnest money deposit. Then two and a half percent of the purchase price, give or take, is going to be how much we pay in closing costs. Then you have your down payment. Now the down payment can be anywhere from three and a half to 99% of the loan. <laughs> how much you make on a down payment is going to structure the type of loan that you qualify for. Does that make sense? And then you kind of field questions from them at that point. But I think if we're not putting it in that kind of a box so they understand they have an earnest money, closing costs, and a down payment, it, and, and when those things are due, because the earnest money is due immediately within three days of opening escrow, then the closing costs and down payment, the remainder of those, all get paid at the closing table through a wire. They don't get to bring a satchel of money <laughs> of cash or doubloons <laughs> or a herd of goats to barter <laughs> you know what i mean like we have to make sure that they as the client understand down payment is three and a half percent to however much you want to make and then the impact of those different percentages would you guys agree with that justin looked like he wanted to say yeah, something catch 
I think that in regards to like the, the loan structure, depending on the type of loan they're going to be getting, especially dealing with like the military buyers and VA and depending on where they're at, first time home buyers, the capitalizing on that should ease some of that pain right off, I think, yeah. the beginning. It goes back to the expectations again. I think for me, understanding this topic, it's the, the roadblock of when somebody just doesn't have that, but yet it's in their mind they're going to buy the home. So without losing the deal or screwing the person over and trying to really benefit them. I think that we have to have more education as to like, well, hey, we can move around this program or this program and get you in dollar for dollar here. Okay. And somebody coming in the industry new like me, I don't know all of those things. For instance, I have a friend right now who's trying to sell and he wants to put 100000 down on a house. And I'm like, for what? Your VA. Put that money in another money market and make percentage off of it. You're not going to stay in the house anyway. You so. He, yeah, it's, that's pointless when that money can make a lot more money than sitting on a $500 less month payment. Yeah. Right. So Mathematically just don't work out. luckily, we as agents don't have to take that hat and go, I am the one stop shop for everything financial decision. Right. We have these wonderful financial partners that we bring with us to have those conversations that can be like, hey, look, I've been doing this for X amount of years. I've helped X amount of veterans purchase homes and looks like the option you have in front of you is to save $500 a month by putting a hundred grand into the house, or you can make $800 a month by putting that in these types of investments. Yeah. Which would you prefer? Yeah. <laughs> That's the easy part though. I think it's the reverse of that. It's, it's the portion where they, portion don't, have where they don't have money at all. That. And they're like, I still want to buy it. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's not 2002 anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the injection handler would be to that would be as so when they say oh i'm trying to save money so what you're okay mr and mrs buyer so what you're let me understand that the reason why you're not purchasing is because you want to make sure that you have enough money saved in order to buy the home right right okay so does it would it do you think it would be beneficial to you to talk to someone that goes over how much exactly you need to buy a home you know with a down payment with closing costs and how the different percentages down are going to affect the payment for you and what's going to make it best for your family. Right. right. And, and best part is I have a lender that can look at your finances and set a plan for you exactly how much you need to save a month to get to your goal by X date. And that way they can work with you to make that goal possible. Would that, do you think that'd be a beneficial? Like, who's going to say no, right? So great, I have a lender who can sit down and they'll go over the different percentages down, what it's gonna total, what it's gonna cost complete, you know, with the closing costs and everything, what you'll need and how we can make that a plan of action. And I think Jason's done that. He's sat down with people and gone, okay, here's the plan you need in order to save and what you need to do each month. And then it's kind of just following up on us, myself or the, the agent and the lender just to make sure they're on track for that. The other piece of that puzzle too is um, uh, a lot of buyers, uh, especially first time buyers, don't understand that um, a $2,000 mortgage on their bottom line budget is different than a $2,000 rent payment. So understanding the tax deductibility is really important. Um, we did see some tax law changes um, in the 2017 reform, which is capping at 10 grand. So not everybody's gonna get all of their property tax write-offs that they had before, but some people will. So um, taking a look at their um, tax return, like someone like Jason or myself, um, uh, we can roughly, and we will, I, at least I won't, I doubt you will either, Jason, say, hey, uh, let me be your CPA and tell you exactly what your deductibility is. But we can at <laughs> least give them an, uh, a ballpark idea and advise them to talk to their CPA to, uh, to sharpen the pencil and get the exact 